I'm heading out to Oshiega Music Festival next week in Montreal, Canada, and the lineup is absolutely stacked. Kendrick Lamar, Billie Eilish, The Flaming Lips, Foles, The National, Baby Keem, Fred again. That's just to name a few, but it's the festival's array of hip hop artists that really has me intrigued. Because something weird is happening in the world of hip hop. Just back in 2018, R&B and hip hop was declared the most dominant genre in the US. Music streaming platforms became the method of consuming music, and eight of the top 10 most streamed artists were rappers. From 2015 to 2018, hip hop music experienced a sort of golden era. Big names like Kanye West proved they still had a great album in them, Drake and Kendrick Lamar were finally reaching global superstardom, and rising sensations like XXXTentacion were producing viral hits of their own. But today, the genre is already showing signs of fatigue. According to Luminate's 2023 mid-year report, R&B and hip-hop still clings to the largest market share of any genre in the US, at 25.9%. But that's a slight dip from last year's 26.8%, which was already a dip from 2021's 27.7%. And this is all while we're experiencing record-breaking streaming numbers. So what's going on? Well, it's clear hip hop is facing a number of challenges. Heavy hitters like Drake, Kendrick, and Post Malone are venturing into different phases of their careers, focusing less on producing the next big hit. The premature loss of potential superstars like Pop Smoke, Juice World, and XXXTentacion has left an unfillable void in the genre's core. And finally, there just seems to be a shortage of emerging talents ready to ascend to stardom. There's also external influences like COVID and TikTok that have had a massive impact on the industry and the way we consume and discover music. But as much as these challenges pose threats, they also present a unique opportunity for an artistic revolution. One that's already begun. It's the dawn of a new era in hip hop. Peggy Peggy, I'm the new young Mayweather. I'm just trying to take hip hop by the Drake era. I've always thought of punk and hip hop as close relatives because hip hop spawned from the same spirit of rebellion. Emerging from the marginalized communities of the Bronx, it offered a platform for the voiceless. Fusing storytelling with social commentary, it became a musical beacon of hope and resistance. Our freedom of speech is freedom of death. We got to fight the powers that be. Fight the power. At its core, it was a celebration of self-expression, a testament to the experience of its creators. The struggles, the injustices, the everyday battles of life in the inner city, all laid bare over a relentless beat. Can't take the smell, can't take the noise, got no money to move out, I guess I got no choice. Early hip hop artists also embraced a do it yourself culture, rejecting commercialism and turning towards self production. It was a raw original form of expression that became a cornerstone of the movement. It's like that, and that's the way it is. <laughs> Over time, hip hop became mainstream, but also diversified, reaching wider audiences and extending its longevity. The late 90s and 2000s then saw the rise of commercial hip hop. We can't be stopped now, cause it's bad boy for life. Puff Daddy and Jay-Z were not only rappers, but savvy businessmen who capitalized on the profitability of the genre. The era eventually gave rise to Drake, who leveraged a more polished and pop-influenced sound that appealed to a broader mainstream audience. Started from the bottom, now we here. Started from the bottom, now my whole team in. And then there's someone like Kanye West, who both contributed to the commercialization of hip hop, yet defied it in very unique ways. At the end of the day, God damn it, I'm killing this shit. challenged the dominant gangster rap of the time, offering more introspective lyrics. He experimented sonically with wider trends in hip hop, and of course, has shown a willingness to go against popular opinion. I'm really happy for you, I'm gonna let you finish, but Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. While these artists have undoubtedly contributed to hip hop's growth and global recognition, this shift towards commercialization has diluted the genre's rebellious edge. Today's hip hop tracks are designed to ensure commercial success, featuring catchy hooks, polished production, and guest appearances from other popular artists. They lack the rawness, originality, and social commentary that defined the early days of the genre. However, that sort of punk ethos hasn't been entirely lost in modern hip hop. But like punk did for rock back in the 70s and 80s, there's a rebellion happening against the mainstream. Hip hop is getting weird. Ooh, really don't like, really don't. And by weird, I mean experimental. Yes, experimental hip hop isn't anything new. It's just that these experimental forms in the genre have never been more prevalent or this popular. While this movement undeniably stands on the shoulders of the genre's pioneers, it's also paving its own unique path. 
This era didn't start because of Yeezus. It didn't even begin with death grips, but it was certainly industrial in sound. When M.I.A.'s third album, Maya, dropped, it was likely the year's most divisive release. There were a lot of raised eyebrows, some harsh critiques, and a fair bit of controversy with its promotion, but looking back, it's clear that this was the prototype moment for the genre, a blueprint that laid the foundation for how hip-hop was set to evolve. It signaled five essential elements. Firstly, there's technological advancements to thank. With access to digital audio workstations and increasingly portable synthesizers, Maya was self-produced at M.I.A.'s home studio in L.A but also atop the Mayan pyramids in Mexico, and later during a vacation in Hawaii. Studio equipment has become increasingly portable and affordable. In the coming years, artists would be able to manipulate sound in ways and in places that were not possible before. It's how college roommates like hip-hop group Clipping can craft tracks around the sound of their alarm clock. The set's up in no second guessing, here in the street people sweating for the money. Or how Baltimore rapper JPEG Mafia can manipulate a pen clicking into something we've never heard before. Whoa. All kind of shit. You think you know me? We the bedroom has become the new studio, and anything within it, an instrument ready to be sampled and turned into a beat. Obviously, you can do your like your, the room thing, but we didn't really live close to each other. We were all from like somewhat different areas, but at the same time, like he has siblings, you know what I mean? It's like, we all have something going on in our house, but end up like his, his grandfather has this dentist office and it started as us recording in the storage room and then it moved into us recording in the lobby and then it moved to us had them giving us our own little space and we eventually had that and it became special because it was like our thing having the dentist office and it wasn't like some type of niche it was just something that ended up happening maya also addressed complex themes around information politics how much we can rely on our news sources the sanctity of our online data and the future of truth in the digital age for an album that predates Instagram and Snapchat, these subjects have only become more prominent. Now, hip hop has always been a platform for addressing societal and political issues, but as these complexities grow, artists are experimenting with new ways to explore and express these themes, making the music more layered and intricate. The fourth effort from hardcore rappers Run the Jewels focused on themes like police brutality, corporate media, and American politics. At the dawn of the BLM movement, effectively creating anthems for a revolution in progress. And you so numb, you watch the cops choke out a man like me until my voice goes from a shriek to whisper, I can't breathe. Then there's something like the joint effort from Kid Cudi and Kanye West that meditates on mental health and redemption during a period when global mental health is a growing concern. And my issues ain't that much I could do. This is something that starts with me. It's these topical and personal issues that create a stronger connection between music and the listener. It takes on a larger role in one's life than simply entertainment. If you're gonna be an artist, there's a time where you just have to embrace the, the responsibility and understand that the power of music is something so special and be able to do it on this magnitude where you reach millions of people. It's like, why not use that for good? Why not tell kids something that they can connect with and use in their life? And like, really my mission statement since day one, mm -hmm. and I'm getting so worked up talking about this, all I wanted to do was help kids not feel alone mm -hmm. and stop kids from committing suicide. Because then there's the heavy influence of the internet and online culture. With MIA's album, the most obvious was the album's cover art, featuring a collage of digital music players. There's also the album's title that was stylized in Leet Speak, the internet's alternative alphabet, but also a deliberate attempt to avoid detection by online search engines. MIA also took full advantage of the internet during the album's promotion. After releasing a series of tracks online and a short film music video that caused widespread controversy, MIA became the most blogged about artist for weeks. The advent of the internet was already proving to transform how music would be shared and discovered, and Spotify still wouldn't reach the United States for another year. It was internet culture that significantly contributed to the rise of groups like Death Grips. Damn, 
Their album No Love Deep Web was notoriously self-released online for free, without the approval of their label, showcasing the power and influence of the internet in music distribution. And Brockhampton, a collective that formed in an online forum, used the internet and streaming to saturate the market and build a following. It allowed them to experiment with a different style when it came to their major label debut. When it comes down to controversy, what's about three CDs in one year with no label? And we signed and our story turned into a fucking fable. A bold move, even for a group with an established fan base. Thanks to streaming platforms and the scale of the internet, artists were more concerned with creating authentic and meaningful art than with being commercially appealing or achieving mainstream success can actually make a living creating their music. I was literally trying to make money from this for so fucking long. Right. By the time I actually actually started making money from it, I was just like, got it. But your music, to me, doesn't really sound like somebody trying to make money off their music. No, that, that wasn't the Seems intention. Seems like you would have made a lot of different choices, <laughs> aesthetically, <laughs> etc. if you were really just trying to get paid. A lot of the rappers I interview seem like they're just trying they to just make trying some to money. Paid. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm, I'm, I'm not tr just trying to get paid. I actually just like what I do. The getting paid shit is a byproduct of it. I do want money so I can live, right. but like, I'm not out here like... I just need the money. I'm only in it for the money type shit. MIA was already known for her diverse set of influences and samples from the worlds of Electro Clash to Bollywood and dance. But now, add the desire to innovate on her sound with industrial elements, and you've got something more avant pop than she's ever done before. The nose to the ground, I found my sound. Artists in the digital age have learned that experimentation with their sound and challenging traditional hip-hop norms helps to create a unique identity. Kanye West has always known this, but his most drastic example came when he drew inspiration from Acid House, Punk, and Chicago Drill music to create the abrasive and experimental Yeezus. Yeezy season approaching, fuck whatever y'all been hearing. Most recently, Lil Yachty ventured from his typical trap rap style to create a psychedelic rock record that sounds closer to Pink Floyd than anything in the realm of hip hop. If executed well, experimenting with new genres and just having a general desire to innovate on your sound no longer alienates audiences. The music is no longer the output. Music is the input, the output is the audience, and the audience compounds with time. You know, the way I make my music is like, <laughs> it is whatever you want it to be if you listen to it, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? I think that's kind of the point of listening to the music. I know that we, we passed that stage right now in music, but it's just listen to it, you know? If you like, you like it. If you don't, you don't. But it's I put a lot of thought into it, and, you know, I try my best to just create something new and, you know... I would say innovative, for lack of better words, every time I want to do something new every time. So The rising avant-garde in hip-hop isn't just about risk and innovation, but also a pushback against the commercialization of the genre. And in that sense, this current era in hip-hop is very reminiscent of the punk revolution that took place in the 70s, or even comparable to the grunge era of the 90s. The artists I've mentioned are defying mainstream norms, utilizing aggressive and experimental soundscapes, politically charged lyrics, and a do-it-yourself culture that parallels that of punk rock. And I don't think any hip hop artist today wears the punk ethos on their sleeve better than JPEG Mafia. Peggy, where you been at? Getting all this promo. When it comes to money, bet these niggas is a no show. I've been out in bed stop, chilling with my feet up, laughing at these sand cloud niggas drop B us. Growing up in Brooklyn, Barrington Hendrix was equally enthusiastic about political rappers like Ice Cube and Chuck D as hardcore bands like Bad Brains and Fear. He showed me that you could talk about topics mm -hmm. like racism. Mm -hmm. It didn't have to be preachy. Mm -hmm. It didn't have to be this. It didn't have to be that. You could attack it the same way you talk about selling drugs. Mm -hmm. You just ground level, this is my extent of this knowledge, right. and I'm, I'm kicking it out like that. So Ice Cube is a huge influence because he made me want to rap. I was just producing before right. that. But like, he made me want to rap because the, the, the shit that he talked about, I didn't know you could do that like that. Right. As a rapper, JPEG's attitude is confrontational, aggressive, and defiant. Work hard, twerk hard, 26, no kids, yeah! Talk shit, back it up! His track titles alone have been enough to set the internet on fire. And while his lyrics do occasionally tackle themes of racism, politics, and social injustice, much like the punk and hip-hop artists before him, he also brings his own flair, interweaving dark humor and internet culture into his verses. A modern update to the traditional protest song. All right, well, 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 that's fine, then. Bitch niggas in the way, well, that's common. White boys getting mad because of my content. The brave on the way, keep it in the comments. Because punk music doesn't have to be political. It's less about what you say and more about how you say it. Nirvana and Smells Like Teen Spirit prove that. 
Musically, JPEG is equally as disruptive. He's known for his unique production style, merging the grittiness of punk with the rhythms of hip hop. My instrument is really a DAW. And, and keyboard is where I know how to play. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, with a DAW, you're able to like transfer information and do different things. So like you can play mm -hmm. the keys to something and then like transfer it to a guitar or something like that. But I don't know how to play guitar, et cetera, et cetera. But right. the beauty of rap is I'm able to figure that shit out and mm -hmm. make what I make because like I'm dedicated to my craft. You know what I'm saying? That's where rap overlap with punk rock. Yeah, exactly. Right. His beats can be abrasive, his samples unconventional, and his sound design experimental. It's a sonic palette that definitely stands apart, but still has the ability to pull you in. <laughs> Peggy writes, produces, and often mixes his own music too, retaining full control over his creative output. I started out as a producer. I've been making beats since I was like 13 or 14. And when I was first making beats, no one liked the beats. To this day, I give people beats and they're just confused. So I just like, I stop, like, I don't have time for that shit. Like, I have a vision for this shit and I want to get it done. And that's just it. I don't have time to like dumb myself down for niggas if they don't really get it. It's whatever. You know what I'm saying? Move on to something else. There's other shit out there. Go listen to that. So like, I kind of started rapping because no one liked my beats. I gave my shit to Mix and Master. It was like $2,000 a song. I can't do that shit. I cannot afford that. So I was like, I'll just learn to do it myself instead of passing it off to some motherfucker who doesn't care about it, you know what I mean? I'm gonna take the time and dedication because I'm gonna do things, I'm gonna make mistakes and make crucial decisions that someone else will never do. So like, I have to take control of this out of necessity because when my shit is left in other people's hands, they fuck it up every time. This do-it-yourself approach extends to his music videos and album art, often self-made and as provocative as his music. And the punk mentality extends to his stage presence too. Heavily inspired by 80s punk bands, JPEG shows are chaotic and purposely unrefined. The first one is someone you, you definitely don't know. It's a guy from Baltimore. His name's Abdu Ali. Okay. This is probably my main influence. He was just playing his songs off a laptop and just going in a crowd and performing. I'd never seen anything like that in my life. So like... I started hanging out with him and I started adopting his style and I evolved into what I have now. So that's my main influence. Wow. But um, other than that, Bad Brains, uh, this band called Fear. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. um, Fear, um, just a lot of punk artists, Black Flag, mm. people like that because they, um, you know, look at their shows. It's hectic. They're like, they're out there. The vocals might sound like shit. They might fuck up. But the live element is what I want people to take from it. I'm going out there. There's no backing track, there's nothing. I'm going out there and I'm gonna give it 100%. If I fuck up, if I run out of breath, you're just gonna hear it. Right. So like, it might not be the most beautiful sounding thing, but like, I'm going out there and giving you 100% because like, yeah, these are the guys, when I watch them, they were always doing that. It makes for an authentic in the moment energy that's unmatched by any other live show. I get that punk is a pretty loaded term, and defining anything as punk usually ends up being controversial, but it's the likes of JPEG Mafia, Clipping, Run the Jewels, and others who are trailblazing an avant-garde revolution. One that isn't just about rejecting commercialism, but about embracing the current digital age, exploiting the possibilities of the internet, and leveraging new technologies to pioneer new forms of sound and expression. Anything that becomes really popular on a wide scale will naturally just be hated or rebelled against, no matter what it is. No matter what the actual music sounds like and it's unfortunate but i just want people to do whatever they want but just like not feel like they have to follow the standard we don't all have to sound like the baby it's fine we can do other things you know what i'm saying that's all i'm trying to say if more stuff like that more risk taking happen i just think creatively rap could become like just so much more interesting you know what i mean it's fine now i just think it could be way weirder we're seeing the boundaries of what is considered hip-hop pushed into new territory while others are redefining the genre from within a punk phase if you will a phase that seems to resonate at Oshiega Festival, where I'll be moshing to the experimental sounds of JPEG Mafia, enjoying the latest psych rock stylings of Lil Yachty, and chanting along with the crowd during Kendrick Lamar's commercial hits. The genre may be showing signs of fatigue commercially, but artistically, it's thriving like never before. Hip-hop's decline in market share should be looked at as a shift rather than a downturn. Where will this shift take us? We'll just have to wait and see. But one thing is for sure, it will be anything but ordinary.